Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to my review for Hitman Agent 47, which of course is the second movie adaptation to the very, very popular and very, very good Hitman video game series. The first one was with Timothy Oliphant all the way back in 2007. It's been eight years since that movie came out. It actually did pretty well considering its budget. I think it cost like $30 million and it made like $100 million in worldwide box office. So it actually did very well considering it made more than three times its budget. But um, this movie... Um, I'm reviewing this late, so we already know this movie's bombing, but uh, this movie comes eight years later, it's a redo, it's a reimagined, not reimagined, it's just a redo, um, they take elements from the video games, and uh, they recasted with a guy named Rupert Friend, who I, I didn't know who that was before this, but now I know he's from Homeland, and he was in some, uh, there's this uh, British uh, prison drama, which is supposed to be really good, uh, I forgot what it's called, Stir Startup, I think it's called, which I, I really want to see, and he's supposed to be in that, he's supposed to be really good in both of those, um, and now he's playing the bald, barcode-headed assassin, silent assassin, a man that uses his environment, and is quiet, and has a mean face, and kills everybody, uses costumes, and, uh, yeah, he could he he could kill everybody in the room without even being in it. That's how badass this assassin is in the video game. As long as you're good at playing the game, <laughs> I guess. But in this movie and in the last movie, not so much. But you know what? Before I get into it, let me just say this: before this movie came out, I wasn't technically looking forward to it. But then I saw the reviews, and then I was really excited because, man. I, there's a few action movies this year when I heard they were supposed to be like really awful I got worried because I'm like uh oh that means they're just gonna be bad like Taken 3 is abysmal like so bad to watch it's not even like fun to watch I mean there's a couple moments that are hilarious because they're so inept but for the most part it's boring but this movie I was just getting a feeling like oh these reviews are making it sound like it's like a really bad fun movie to watch like really awful and it kind of like the first movie the first one I kind of liked because of that so was that what I got with this movie? Let's find out. I dare say the story in this movie does not mean anything. It doesn't matter. I, I don't need to explain the story here. Here's the story. Agent 47 walks really slowly around places and shoots people with a sniper or his silver ballers, which is, you know, one of my favorite set of weapons in a video game ever. Uh, and he goes around shooting people. At first, he's going to go after this girl, played by Hannah Ware, who knows the location of the guy that made the agent program, which, of course, Hitman Agent 47 is one of them. He's a super soldier agent that can go and, like, pretty much take any damage that he, uh, anybody could dish at him. He's a, he's a badass. He's super badass. He goes in there. He's very intelligent, and he has no emotions. He's the perfect assassin, um, and he's a part of the program, and he's, like, the best out of there. So he's going after this girl because she knows where this guy is that made the agent program, and he wants to know where that guy is for some reason. And then there's another guy played by uh, Zachary Quinto who wants to know where that guy is as well, and he helps uh, Hannah Ware from getting... Uh, kidnapped or killed by agent 47 it's not really clear and then along the way uh there's gunfights pew pew uh some people end up being not the hero and end up being the villain and then some people that look like they were the villain ends up being the hero and it's very very obvious very very predictable especially if you've seen the trailer you know exactly what's going to happen with characters hell if you've seen clips of this movie just a 30 second tv spot or whatever most likely you know what's going to happen you don't even need to know any of that. You could just like read the synopsis and go, oh yeah, this guy's a villain. Obviously he is. Um, and yeah, that's that's the story. It really does not matter. It's so lame. Um, it's really lame. The main villain in this, Zachary Quinto and uh, and uh, Rupert Friend aren't even the main villains. Whoever is the main villain. I'm not going to spoil it. The real main villain is this guy played by Thomas Kirschman who just shows up and sits at a desk. Like, that's the main villain. That's supposed to be the main villain. And he's extremely generic and just, like... he's He says, like, three lines in the entire movie, and you're supposed to be like, oh, that guy, he needs to die. Like, he, he's the bad guy. Like, I don't even know who he is. He's the leader of a thing called the Syndicate that wants to bring the agency back. That's it. I don't know anything about him. I don't know if he has a family. I don't know what his real evil plan is. Uh, I guess he wants to make an army of agents, but he never says that himself. At least I don't think he did. Uh, it's just... Like, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> why, why am I supposed to want him dead so bad? Because he's the villain, I guess. Um, Rupert Friend was good. He had the physique. Whenever he was doing the action, he looked like Agent 47. Um, for the most part, he was good. He had no emotions, which was perfect. So, hey, if he's not a good actor, 
you know, I couldn't tell because he was supposed to not emote in this film. And he did a good job there, at least. Um, also, I would say this. One negative towards him is that he doesn't have the face for Agent 47. The physique, fine. He's, he looks fine there, even though the suit looks a little bit big on him. <laughs> There's a part where he lifts up his arms and his suit, like, starts coming out. He looked like a, what's his name? Uh, that shitty movie, Master of Disguise, the turtle guy. Which I, I, I thought about that and I was like, God damn, what, that movie sucks so bad. But I was just like, oh, okay, I'm watching a way better movie right now, which isn't saying much. But uh, one problem I had was his face. I thought Agent 47 in the game had like a very stern, like murderous face, if that makes sense. He always had a face like this. Always. Like, when he was not moving a muscle in his face, that was his face. He just looked like this. Like he pissed. He pissed. You don't want to mess with him. In the movie, his face is more like this. That's it. I mean, it looked like he's, he's up for some action, but he didn't look like he was about to murder everybody, which he does quite a bit in this movie, so it didn't make any sense. He should have a murder face. Rupert Friend, work on your murder face, because yours is surely lacking. Hannah Ware, who was supposed to be the heart of the movie, the, the, more, the most human character in it, I thought she was pretty bland for the most part, and I didn't really care about her whole story, to be honest. I wish it was more about Agent 47. If you see the film, you know what I'm talking about. I wish it was really more about Agent 47 than her. I really liked Zachary Quinto in this movie, who plays John Smith, like like I said before. Um, I didn't say this before. In the first half of the film, it pretty much plays out exactly like Terminator in this movie, because he plays Kyle Reese, of course, Hannah Wears, Sarah Connor, and Hitman's Terminator. He's straight up going after her, just like slow walking, just like Schwarzenegger was, and he has like no emotions. It's straight up Terminator, and Kyle Reese is like trying to stop him, even though he's like fist fighting him, which Kyle Reese never really, <laughs> that would never work in Terminator, the first one. The first one. I, I thought that was actually kind of entertaining, even though there's a whole subway fight scene that is hilarious. I loved it. Mostly because of the amazing special effects used in this. And I say amazing with about 400 quotes because the amazing, I mean, the special effects are so atrocious. There's a part where uh, Zachary Quinto and Hitman are fighting and they, they knock each other off of the, uh, like, the portion where you can see, like, the subway, like, go under like kind of like a bridge and they fall onto the subway train and they're they're on it and they're rolling around on it and they fall off and it's the funniest like ps2 graphics you've ever seen it's like them falling off and of course it's not real it's special effects and it looks hilarious it looks like if you slowed it down you could see like none of their faces are textured or anything like <laughs> i felt like it felt really low budget. I thought that was really funny watching that. And that whole subway fight is really funny because it's like Hitman could have easily just shot Zachary Quinto in the face the entire time when they're fighting. He could have easily, but he never did because he was just like, oh, screw it. I'm just, I want, I just want to get this girl. I don't want to just take two seconds out of my time and shoot this guy in the face and be done with him who's slowing me down throughout the entire fight so I can go get this girl. He never does. He's just like, no, screw it. I have one objective. I don't care about this guy. I'm just going to keep punch him in the face, hopefully he gets knocked out. I, I loved it. I thought that whole fight scene was hilarious. And then there's a part where he has to go under the subway train as it passes by. Agent 47 has to, and that's that's even funnier. Uh, <laughs> the, the whole movie has moments like this, and that's why I loved it. The acting was okay, but what really got me is when it got to the action and some of the dialogue, because man, the dialogue and the action is ridiculous in this film. It really is. The dialogue is either filled with exposition or bullshit. <laughs> like, I'm straight up bullshit. Like, it's not straight up bullshit. It's not like they're shooting bullshit out of their mouths. Um, no, like, there's a whole scene in a car with Zachary Quinto and the Sarah Connor character where they're talking and literally that entire scene is just there so Zachary Quinto can talk about the the program and the exposition and that's it they never talk about like hey how are you how are you doing whatever nothing just like added there to add character it's literally just there to be like oh you're 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 really special because you know where this guy is who's this guy oh he's your father and he made the agent program what's the agent program it's a program where all these agents got made and they're badass hitmen I was like why are badass hitmen they're guys that are gonna kill you and uh, what are they gonna kill me for because you know where they are and where he is it just keeps going on it's like terrible it's really bad but it made me like chuckle I was like <laughs> and then the entire time while this is happening it keeps cutting to uh agent 47 like loading a sniper as he's like aiming it at the car they're talking in I'm like 
Oh man, <laughs> if they both die in the scene after giving away exposition, and that was just straight up for the audience, I would laugh my ass off. And then the rest of the film is just like Agent 47, I don't know, dicking around, like shooting people, doing random contracts. That would have been amazing, but no, of course not. Um, there's a lot of really great action here, I don't even really want to spoil. Um, and there's a lot of amazing reveals in this that I can't spoil, but let me just tell you, I think I mentioned this before, but there's a reveal with Zachary Quinto's character that I was just like this is amazing this is amazing I love this it just went off the walls nuts and it reminded me a lot of the Hitman games where the Hitman games kind of go insane they, they do they go a little ridiculous it's not really set in the real world that's for damn sure um, especially the last movie I mean the last movie the last video game and uh, a couple of the other ones I played like blood money you fight a guy in a wheelchair <laughs> like but it, it's actually a really hard boss battle I remember um, there's, there's a lot of really silly moments in those they're very b-movie-esque here it nailed it the reveal with Zachary Quinto's character and then the ending reveal made me laugh really hard and then it wasn't even done there it was like you know what this is based on uh, Hitman the game let's bring a character from the Hitman video game into this movie and I didn't even realize that's what they were doing midway through the credits a scene pops up where someone with white hair and pale skin shows up and I'm like oh it's the albino wait hold on that, that's that character why is he the albino now and then it just ends I'm like I can't wait for the sequel. <laughs> like I couldn't wait. It, the action, the the ridiculous dialogue, the terrible, 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 terrible dialogue. Oh man, I I I really enjoyed this film. It put a smile on my face a lot. And don't get me wrong, there are its fair share of boring moments. There's a whole scene where um, Katya and Agent Forty Seven are talking in an apartment. It's supposed to be like building character, and that's good. I like that. I like when you build character, but it's uh, it's kind of weird. I'm not, I'm not gonna spoil what happens in there when they find out who they are related to each other. Um, kind of spoiled it, but whatever. Um, it, I, I, that whole scene is kind of weird because they talk about love and stuff, and then you find out what they are. I'm like, oh. It was an awkward conversation. <laughs> yeah, that's why he was trying to avoid the question. Like, no, shut up, Katya. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want you. I don't want you to get the wrong impression. There's a whole scene where Katya takes Agent 47's guns so she can disassemble them because she likes to disassemble stuff. I guess that that was a character of hers that showed up out of nowhere. And of course, Agent 47 has to fight a bunch of goons off because he doesn't have guns, uh, so he can't just straight up shoot him in the face. Uh, there's a lot of really great moments, but there's a lot of really slow moments too. There's a whole moment, just like the apartment scene, there's a whole part where Katya finds out where the guy is, and they find him, who's played by Siren Hines, uh, and they talk about like bullshit, it's boring, bad dialogue, but not like bad and funny way. Just bad and like, eh. And this is scenes like that, but for the most part, this movie is really fun, really funny. I recommend it as a rental. Watch it with a bunch of friends. Laugh at it. Laugh at the silly uh, action. Uh, hell, there's even a whole scene where it pretty much acts as a, t a tutorial, uh, like in a video game, like a training mission uh, with Katya and uh, Agent 47, which I thought was really fun. Like, there's a lot of fun B-movie shitty moments in this film. I don't think you'll really be bored. A lot of people are saying, this is as boring as Fantastic Four. It's as shitty. No. Fantastic Four is a whole new level of boring and shitty. That movie's just straight up boring, nothing happening, no good characters, no silly moments really. It was just terrible. This movie, at least it had like some really ridiculous reveals. It was kind of inspired in a way. And they obviously played the video game and went like, oh yeah, I want to put that in there, like make that reveal, kind of like a Marvel stinger in a way. I, I thought it was really, really fun. So I know this review has gone on for a long time, but I really wanted you to explain to you why I enjoyed this film so much it's so much fun and i highly recommend checking it out when it comes out on dvd i would not say buy this i mean buy a ticket for this i would say rent it when it get, get, gets on red box or whatever or if you can get it for very cheap in the next few months which most likely it'll go in down in price really quickly uh when it comes on blu-ray i would recommend picking it up and watching it with, with a bunch of friends it's a, it's it's fun it's it's b-movie fun i thought but i can't give it a high score because i don't know if they were trying to really do that i think it's just like a mistake which is my favorite kind of b-movies when it was a mistake they were actually trying to make a good movie and they end up making a shitty one that's why i have never seen sharknado because i don't give a shit like that's just straight up oh we made a bad movie because it's funny how about just make a good movie but then fuck it up so bad that it's just 
a terrible film. <laughs> like, I'll watch that. But, um, like, The Room. The Room, he tried to make a good movie, and it failed. And that's why that movie's great. But, um, I, I'm going to give this, uh, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to give this a 17 out of a 40. It's definitely not great. But when I think about it, it still had a lot of fun moments. And if it just didn't have those silly moments, and it was just a straight-up boring action movie kind of like the gunman from earlier this year or the gunsman or whatever it was called uh then i'd probably say this is one of the worst movies of the year but because it was so much fun in a b-movie way i can't say that i really can't and uh, it's just it's a blast i really enjoyed it in a uh, boy next door way where that movie goes insane at times this movie does too maybe a little bit more insane so anyway there you go that's my review for hitman agent 47 i hope you enjoyed it thank you and goodbye